I've got your energy stories for this, the fifth week of July, 2023. And my first question is, what's up with New York and battery fires? Yet another lithium ion installation ignited last week, the third in a month. This one in Jefferson County, New York, where four trailers caught fire. A shelter in place order was briefly in effect for local residents to avoid inhaling toxic fumes. The last four weeks have been particularly rough for developer Convergent involved in all three installations. It had to issue a statement on July 29th about two storm disruption related fires with power and centipede battery systems. And this time, Convergent's statement said the July 27th fire was a system manufactured by GE. In response to the recent incident, New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced creation of a fire safety working group with immediate inspections of storage sites across the state. Well, Maine just blew past its target of installing 100,000 heat pumps by 2025, so it's setting a new goal of 175,000 by 2027. According to some emails I've seen from personnel at Efficiency Maine, the group overseeing the effort, the majority are air source heat pumps, the mini splits one sees in many homes today. Many households in Maine rely on heat pumps in all but the coldest weather when they often switch to other backup sources such as oil or wood stoves. That recourse may be less necessary in the future, however, as the Department of Energy's Cold Climate Heat Pump Challenge has nine vendors participating. Among them, Lennox has a prototype offering heating at 5 degrees Fahrenheit with double the best previous efficiencies and functioning effectively at 5 and 10 degrees below zero while Rheem and others are also emerging with better tech. Also in Maine, the legislature approved a bill calling for the state to purchase 3 gigawatts of offshore wind generation by 2040, equal to about half of Maine's current electricity use. The bill also designates provisions for supply chain development and a port on Maine's coast to be used for turbine assembly. The federal leasing process for Maine is scheduled for late 2024, and with limited access to shallow continental shelf areas, we're probably looking at an awful lot of floating wind. Well, Pacific Gas and Electric has launched a distributed energy management system, DERMS, in partnership with Schneider Electric and Microsoft. The EcoStructure DERMS software should help allow for more distributed energy resources, DERs, to interact with the grid, responding to changes in demand or other grid conditions. The software will be able to pull data from hundreds of thousands of devices, ranging from water heaters to EV chargers, and organize it to create improved situational awareness for grid operators, who will then be able to better exploit the flexibility of these DERs. In electrified transportation, Japan's Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation has signed an agreement with San Francisco-based swap company Ample to develop a battery swap technology pilot project for electric trucks in Japan. Mitsubishi recently rolled out its electric e canter light-duty truck, and Ample's technology may be able to swap its batteries in under five minutes in its stations. Sticking with the charging theme, BMW, GM, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, and Stellantis announced at JV last week to establish a vast North American public fast charging network. Under the plan, at least 30,000 high-speed EV chargers will be operable by 2030, with the first ones in the U.S. ready by next summer. The initiative will also be powered by renewables in some form, whether through purchase power agreements or rec purchases. That was unclear. And finally, the U.S. Department of Energy will devote $20 million to a program focusing on improving solar energy installations and boosting efforts to reduce, reuse, and recycle associated materials. One project, the Solar Partnership to Advance Recycling and Circularity, will receive $8 million to support a single entity in improving recovery efficiency and end-of-life practices for solar components such as modules and inverters. The DOE will also provide three to six other projects with funds ranging from 2 to $4 million each to bring expertise from various stages of the PV system life cycle to reduce costs and improve performance of the PV systems and components. Improvements in this area are badly needed. Within the decade, millions of spent panels will be either finding their way into a recovery loop or on their way to a landfill, and we can't afford the latter. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.